Hi everyone, just wanted to take a moment to talk a little bit about tangent secants and chords, which would kind of be the last thing relating to circles. We're specifically going to be talking about the special um, segments in, that, that kind of come to play involving circles. So our goals for today really was going to be focusing in this video on using the properties of secant, oh, I'm sorry, finding segment lengths using um, tangent secant and chord relationships. All right, so we're going to start off by looking at this formula. So this formula is telling us that if we have, or this theorem I should say, this theorem is telling us that if we have two chords that intersect inside of a circle, right, then the product of the lengths of the segments will be equal, um, will be equal, really. So what's it saying? It's saying if we have two chords that are intersecting, they're cut into two different parts. You multiply the two parts together, set them equal to each other, and it'll all work out, all right? If you would like to kind of see the proof behind this, I mean, I think you can probably guess where this is gonna end up, um, triangle. But anyway, um, we, we will we'll, we'll take a look at these a, a little bit later. But let's go through this process just to make sure we're all set. So in terms of how we do this, remember, the parts of the chord multiplied together are equal to the other parts of the other chord multiplied together. So three times X is equal to six times seven. So three X is equal to 42. So um, X is equal to 14. Okay. So similarly here, we have six times X is equal to nine times nine. Six X is equal to 81. X is going to simplify to 9 over 2. All right. Last one here. Uh, we have 18 times X is equal to 15 times 12. Let me just quickly do 15 times 12. That is 180. So I have 18 X is equal to 180. So X is just going to be equal to 10. And that's it, simple enough, right? So if you see the two inside, multiply them together, set them equal, okay? Um, in, in terms of difficulty, most of the problems are just really going to be like this. There, there's really not a whole lot of craziness that happens. Uh, and now there are two more, okay? So what happens if you have secants or tangents that are meeting outside but are intersecting the circle? So as you can see here, it's kind of like, you can see how it's almost kind of related to the other top part, but it, it's, you know, slightly different. Um, so we have two secants that share an endpoint outside of the circle, all right? The product of one secant segment and its external part are equal to the other times its external part, all right? So what do I mean by that? So that means if we take a look here, this part times the whole thing is equal to this part times the whole thing. Okay, so that's how these are going to work. Similarly, if you have a secant and a tangent, you still have the outside part times the whole thing. The only problem is this one is completely outside. So the outside part times the whole thing is just the whole thing times the whole thing. So it's the whole thing squared. Okay, so when you have a tangent and a secant, you're going to have one side squared and the other side, don't forget, it is the outside part times the whole thing. Okay, so let me make that a little bit bigger so you can see. So um, in terms of these, the ones that we're gonna do are relatively straightforward. It is possible for you to get some things that are factorable or you get a quadratic. Um, for the purposes of this, we're just you know illustrating exactly how you set it up. If you then have any questions, feel free to reach out. So in terms of this one, right, don't forget it's two times the whole thing. It's very tempting to write 16, it's not times 16, it's times 18. X times the whole thing, right? So here you can see one that's gonna end up being factorable. So we have 36 is equal to X squared plus nine X. So I have zero is equal to X squared plus nine X minus 36. So if I factor that, it should be X plus 12 x minus 3, 
So my two solutions here are negative 12 and 3. Now, naturally, if I plug in negative 12 here, that makes no sense. So my answer needs to be 3. Okay? So my answer is just going to be 3, right? If you have a negative solution, you plug it in, it doesn't make any sense. So same thing here. 5 times 18 is equal to x times x plus 9. Okay, so we have 90 is equal to x squared plus 9x. 0 is equal to x squared plus 9x minus 90. Okay, so now we need to find factors of that um, that will add up. And I believe it would be 15 times 6, right? So 0 is equal to x plus 15 x minus 6, so x is equal to negative 15, positive 6, so my answer is just going to be positive 6. Okay, right, because if I plug in negative 15 here, I have a negative 15 length, that makes no sense. This one, this is a slightly different one, this is the tangent one, so I have 2 times x plus 6 plus 2 is equal to 6 squared. So I have 2x plus 16 is equal to 36. 2x is equal to 20. x is equal to 10, right? So this is a situation where you don't end up factoring. You kind of like those situations. So now on this last one over here, I'm going to move my head because I'm going to run out of room. So I have x oops, times x plus x plus 2 is equal to 12 squared, so we have x times 2x plus 2 equals 144. Two x squared plus 2x equals 144. Now these all have a 2, so I'm going to divide out the 2. So I get x squared plus x minus 72 is 0. So I have x plus 9, x minus 8. My two solutions here are x equals negative 9 and positive 8. I do not want the negative 9. That makes no sense. So I'm going to plug it to the 8. The 8 will work. All right? So with those, just be careful. It's very easy to end up with a quadratic or two. Um, but ultimately, if you have any questions, please reach out and let me know. Uh, feel free to look at these if you have any additional questions as well. There's some more examples I have available. All right, let me know if you have any questions, and have a great day.